Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'll be talking about some of the best Google apps and services that you can use on your Galaxy Watch Air Classic. Now, it comes pre-installed with some of the Google apps, but others you have to download yourself. So let's get started. The first app that I want to talk about is the YouTube Music app. Now, just like Spotify, you can use YouTube Music if you have the premium subscription of YouTube. And that will open up a lot of YouTube Music features on this watch. So if I go in YouTube Music here, so this is the front page of the Music app. Here you can see your like music. You can go through that. And then if you scroll down, you'll see some suggestions for workout music, some recommended music as well. So some mixes are available. Then you can go in your library and in settings. And if we go in library here, you can see your last played music, your playlists, your song, artists, subscriptions, and even podcasts. So if we go in playlists and then go in like music, you can see your music here. You can also download this music and remove it from here. So right now this is downloaded on the watch. So I don't even need my phone. I can just listen to this music on the watch itself. And if I play it, you can see the music play here. You can pause it, play it, go forward a track, go back a track. You can like this. And from here, you can change the output device. So right now the output device is the watch, but I can change it to the phone. From here, I can scroll this rotating bezel to increase or decrease the volume or tap on these buttons. And then one interesting feature here is that if you long press on this button here, it will skip the track forward really fast and same happens if you tap on this button here. Now, if you go in settings, you can go in downloads and here you can set a limit of how many songs you want. And if you keep going down, you can select if you want to only download music over Wi-Fi and you can also clear your downloads. Next app that I wanna talk about is perhaps one of the best note-taking apps on Wear OS platform. And there's no denying that. It's the Google Keep app, again, from Google. And this is the app right here. It's very simple and in its simplicity is its power. So it basically allows you to capture notes very quickly. If you tap on the plus button, you get two options, create note and create list. If you have made notes already on your phone in the Google Keep app, they will appear here. So if I tap on create note, you can very quickly just type anything and tap on this button and now the note is saved. Then you can pin this note. You can also add reminder to this note. So this morning, this afternoon, these are some already uh, pre-made options. You can select those. You don't have the option to select a specific time. So let's say if I select this evening, so it will automatically set 6 p.m. as the time. You cannot change it. You can delete it though. Then you can also archive this note and archive notes are not accessible on the watch. The other option is create a list. So this is very useful if you want to create a very quick grocery list for yourself or a list of things that you want to remember. So you can do that as well. And it will show up as checkboxes. So there you go. And as you go through the list, you can mark them off and they will appear as a checked item. You can uncheck them as well if you want. Again, you can add reminders to it, you can pin these notes and you can archive them as well. Next app that I want to talk about is Google Maps and Google Maps have improved a lot in the last few years. So if you go in Google Maps, you get four options right on the home page. You have your maps option. If you tap on it, it takes you to the maps, shows you your live location. Then you have the search option where you can search any address you want. You can set up your home address from here or your work address here. If you scroll down, you see the recent places you have visited or searched in Google Maps, either on your phone or on the watch. They will show up here. Below that, you see some tabs that allow you to search for nearby restaurants or groceries, cafes, restrooms, parking spots, parks, idioms, or transit stations. So this works very well. If you are looking for a nearby parking spot, just tap on that and it will bring up the nearby parking spots for you. And then you can just tap the one that you're looking for. It gives you an option to either drive there, take the transit there, walk there or cycle there. If you continue to scroll down, it tells you how far it is and if it is a 24 hour available parking spot. And then you also have the whole address and the phone number to that address as well. Now you can select to drive there and it will open up 
this interface where you get to see all the instructions step by step or you can just tap on this button here and it takes you to the map now here you can still see the instructions at the bottom what is your next step what turn you're taking or whatever it is at the top you can see how long it will take you to get there and the current time and if the volume is turned on here you can scroll the rotating bezel to zoom in and out of the map which is very cool and convenient if you scroll further down you will see the option to download offline maps on the watch as well if you're exploring the city on foot you can have these offline maps on your watch and then just follow along these routes on your wrist you don't have to pull out your phone and then finally you have some settings so here you can go in mirroring so if you start any route on your watch it will also start on your phone and vice versa so you can turn this on for driving transit walking cycling or just turn on this option mirror on phone which will work for any navigation then we have distance units so you can select between automatic kilometers or miles next app that i want to talk about is the google wallet app so if you go in google wallet it is very easy and simple to set up. Basically, you set it up on your phone. You add all your cards, your loyalty cards and your point cards, all of that on your phone. And then you download the companion app on your watch. And all of these cards are added to your watch straight away. As you can see that they are available on the app. The important thing here is that you have to add your credit card manually. It doesn't transfer automatically, which gives me a sense of security. To use my credit card on this watch another thing here is that to use your credit card on the watch you must have screen lock turned on which is very important because if you take your watch off the screen will be locked and no one will be able to use your watch this can be very useful in scenarios where your watch gets lost or it gets stolen or something like that no one will be able to access your banking cards which is great and another very important point to remember is that if you turn off the screen lock your credit card will be removed from this app and you have to add it again and go through the verification process through your bank again, which is again a very good security measure. I personally really like it. And using your watch to pay through Google Wallet is pretty simple. You open the app, it brings up your credit card at the front page and then you just tap and pay just like your phone. It was seamless. Although I was not able to use my Tim Hortons barcode through the watch, it wouldn't scan for some reason. If anyone of you is from Canada and know why that didn't happen, please enlighten me in the comments. Next app is the Gmail app. So I've never used Gmail on Galaxy watches before. I've never reviewed them. But Gmail app turns out is a pretty useful app to have on a Galaxy watch. So I downloaded Gmail this time and turns out it's great. So it shows you all your emails just like you see on your phone. You can go in your email tap on the more button and you can actually see the entire email on the watch it doesn't cut out you can see the whole thing until the end and at the end you can archive the email you can delete it or you can start it you can also mark it as unread or you can reply from the watch and then of course you can open it up on the phone some material 3 going on here in the gmail app on this watch which I really like to be honest now another thing you can do here is that you can swipe the email to the left and you see the exact same options you see on your phone you can archive the email or you can delete it as well from here you can also start it or unstar it now if you go in the menu here you can see your inbox all your labels are here as well so you can go in your start emails your sent emails outbox and other labels that you created for yourself. Next app that I wanna talk about is the Google Calendar. So Google Calendar is actually one of the most simple and straightforward Google apps that don't have a lot of bells and whistles, but have great functionality. It gives you exactly what you're looking for, your events, your tasks from all the calendars that you're using. Now, because this is using my personal calendar, I'm going to blur this information, but you can still see how this works. So if I go in here, you can see the today's date and then all the events or tasks that I have added in my calendar on my phone here. And if I scroll up, the date changes and then the tasks or events for those days and then the date changes again. And you can scroll down and see all the events or tasks that I have created for the coming weeks on this app. And it is pretty simple. It doesn't allow you to add more events or create tasks or anything like that on this app but it allows you to see everything that you have created on the calendar app on your phone. And then if you tap on one of these events, you can actually see some more information. So you can see the date, you can see the address if you have added one, 
you can see the notes if you have added those notes along with the events and then you can see the email address um, or the account that this event or task is related to and it gives you an option to open it on the phone or delete it from the watch and that's pretty much it moving on the next app that i want to talk about very briefly is gboard so gboard everyone knows is a great option to have on your smartphone but it is also a great option to have on galaxy watch so if you install gboard you can actually access it from the settings go in general and here go in keyboard lists and default go in default keyboard and change gboard you won't see any specific Gboard app in the App Store, but this is how you can switch from default Samsung keyboard to default Gboard. Now, Gboard is a great keyboard for your watch because again, the swipe to type is great on Gboard and it gives you all of these buttons at the top here. So you can go in your emojis and you can find your emojis, whatever it is you're looking for. You can go in numerical keyboard, or you can dictate whatever it is that you want to type as well from here and it works really well the swipe to type function is very good i think the swipe to type function is better than samsung keyboard but samsung keyboard has its bells and whistles as well that i've explained in a dedicated keyboard video uh, google gboard is a fantastic app to have especially if you like to swipe to type it's very very good now let's talk about one of the best features on this watch gemini it feels like gemini was born to be on a smartwatch it's one of the best features on wear os it not only answers your queries but can also carry out complex or multiple tasks on the watch you can ask it to start a workout that burns a specific number of calories or search for an address and then ask it to send that address to a contact you can activate it by long pressing the home button or using a voice command and i cannot stop using it enough so let's go through Gemini setup. If you go in settings and then go in Google, you will see this option, digital assistant, go in here. First time you will have to go through some steps on your phone, but after that you can go through these settings on this watch. So you can turn on Hey Google feature. So if you say Hey Google, Gemini comes up as you've just seen. You can press and hold the home button to launch Gemini. There you go. And then if you go down, you can turn on the voice response. So if you ask anything from Gemini, it will respond back with text, but you will also listen to the sound. You can turn this off if you want to be more private and you just want to read what it says. And then if you scroll up, you can turn off Gemini entirely. So that's about it from this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one and you've learned something new. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.